Medical school admissions is so competitive nowadays that if you fail even just one time, you'll never get in. This isn't true and is a huge misconception about our space. I'm Mike. I trained at UCLA Medical School and I'm now a anesthesiology resident in New York City. Over the last seven years, I've helped thousands of pre-meds just like you get into medical school. And it's these pre-meds, including the ones that have gotten into the top medical schools in the country, and myself included, have all failed multiple times. So in this video, I'm going to share a ton of my own failures to normalize it and so that you can take away the lessons without having to experience the scars from the mistakes in my pre-med journey. First, transparency about failure is really important. Too many pre-meds nowadays struggle from critical mental health issues. And part of it, I think, is the undue pressure they put on themselves to be perfect. And in today's world with social media, you don't really see a lot of negative things being posted, only the wins of all of your many hundreds of friends. For example, no one puts on Instagram the 30 shadowing emails they sent that got no response. And even if you get full access to a successful pre-med application, of course, that application won't naturally feature the pre-med's failures, only their most important, most significant experiences. Your most meaningful experience on your work and activity section won't be that clinical research project you never got. With that being said, failure does teach a ton of great lessons. And one key thing that I've learned is that you cannot expect a different outcome if you don't change something. For example, I applied to the student stroke team. It was a very competitive club on campus that allowed pre-meds to do clinical research in the emergency department. And every quarter for three straight years, I applied to that club. And on the seventh time I applied, just like the very first time I applied, I got rejected. The thing is, if you look at the seventh application compared to the first one, nothing really significantly changed. My application revolved around me being a neuroscience major, loving science and loving to help people. But interestingly, if you looked at the rest of my resume, there is nothing related remotely to stroke and stroke research. Personally, I never grew from that failure. I beat my head on the same door the exact same way three years running straight. And of course, the outcome was no surprise. It was predictable to everyone except for me, I guess. If I were to do it all over again, I wish I asked the club leadership for some pointed feedback. And of course, I wish I followed whatever advice they were going to give me and actually changed my resume and changed my application to fit what they were looking for. So if something isn't working out and you continue to fail, whether it's your GPA or your inability to get clinical experience or research, figure out where the lesson is and more importantly, commit to changing something so you get a different outcome the next time. And equally as important as the failures is understanding what success looks like. It's easy to figure out what's not working, but sometimes it's not very clear what a strong application looks like. In our description box down below, there is a link to our application database, which features eight full medical school applications that got into top schools like UCSF and UCLA. You can check it out if you want to calibrate what your understanding of success really looks like. Another failure that most pre-meds experience, and I certainly did, was the inability or struggle to get to research clinical experience and shadowing. I'm certainly not the only pre-med and I certainly will not be the last pre-med who has to send hundreds of emails, do dozens of interviews and get zero responses and opportunities. Here, I learned a huge lesson after sending 80 shadowing emails total and getting my first opportunity. That lesson was taking full responsibility. If you believe that your results are not your fault, then it's really out of your hands. You can certainly say that you're getting zero responses to your research emails because, well, quote, they don't know what they're doing and they don't know who they're missing out on. Congratulations, you certainly learned a lesson, but that's not a lesson that's going to serve you. Inevitably, you'll make the same exact mistake and you'll blame it on another party that has full power of your situation. So instead, take full responsibility and assume that there's always something that you can do better. Of course, when you figure out what that thing is, do it. For example, do your emails show that you've been curious and proactive when reading and understanding their research? Are your emails succinct, respecting a busy professor's time and attention? And most commonly, is that email specific enough that it can only be sent to that PI or that specific doctor? I've had far too many shadowing emails say the wrong last name and be so generic you could write it with ChatGPT today. 
failure is critically instructive because it points a big neon light to the direction that you should take instead. And truthfully, if others have made the mistake already, you don't need to make that same mistake. Our mentees and pre-med catalysts earn research and extracurriculars in a matter of weeks, not months. And that's only because they use the word for word templates based literally on the hundreds of failed emails that I have personally sent. They're designed to be inherently curious, inherently proactive, and they're designed to be so specific to that PI that the PI will be happy to give you some time of day. And if you want, you can see those exact emails and use those exact templates. We talk about it in this video. It shows you the terrible emails that I wrote in the beginning, and they can be quite cringe. And of course, those research and those shadowing templates will always be available to you. Free, word for word, plug and play templates you can use right now. The links are in the description box below. And so learn from my experience, whether it's sending generic emails or not being prepared. Throughout my pre-med journey, I failed a ton, but I've also succeeded a ton. And I eventually got accepted to my top choice medical school, UCLA. And while today that may be all you see, you have not seen all the failures along the way. Behind every upperclassman, medical student, resident, or doctor that you know is the exact same story. Pre-Med Catalyst is based on my journey and that of the thousands of pre-meds that we've served. We have all faced the exact same obstacles that you are struggling with today. Our successes and our failures have taught us how to best navigate the pre-med years. And these videos and our company is designed entirely around helping you live your pre-med journey. There's this fantastic quote that I think encapsulates our philosophy well. Only a fool learns from his mistakes. A wise man learns from the mistakes of others. And one step further than that, the wisest man also learns from others' successes. Thanks for watching and have a great day.